Good day, Grade Tolls. Welcome to your science lesson for today. In this lesson, we're going to carry on going through organic chemistry. So let's get started straight away. Um, we were talking about alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes, and we we're talking about the fact that alkanes are your saturated hydrocarbons. In other words, they've only got single bonds. Your alkenes are unsaturated because they've got at least one double bond. And that's as far as we really got, I think. So let's talk a little bit more about alkenes. First of all, they're more reactive than alkanes because they're unsaturated. And as I mentioned yesterday, your alkenes, um, your alkenes double bond is easier to break. So in other words, if you've got C double bonded C, hydrogen, 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 it is easier to break one of these double bonds than it is to break a single bond. Similarly, when we get to alkynes, C triple bonded C, it is easier to break this bond than it is to break the other two, and then it's easier to break that one. Please understand that all together, this bond is stronger than a single bond, and all together, this bond is stronger than a double bond, but if these this is more reactive than this, and this is more reactive than alkanes for the simple reason that it's easier to break that third bond. Grade 12s, I like to explain this with a silly analogy. Let's pretend that you are um, um, hanging off cliff, okay, and um, there's this really big muscular guy comes and you're hanging by your fingertips off this really tall cliff and this really big muscular guy comes along, I don't know, let's pretend he's Arnie, and Arnie comes along and he says, okay, don't worry, I'll save you, and he grabs your one arm with, with, with the one hand and both your legs the other, okay, and you're like, yay, I'm saved. Do you feel fairly secure? Yes, you do, because you've got three append. You're holding onto the cliff with one hand, and you've got three appendages that are being held by this really strong person. Awesome, wonderful. However, let's say that he is struggling a little bit, and he goes, okay, don't worry. I need you to let go of one of your legs, okay? So now I am going from a triple bond where I had him holding my one arm and both my legs to where he's holding an arm and a leg and I'm holding on and I've now got a double bond. So would you be willing to let him get it go of one of your legs? Okay, yes you would because you're thinking, okay, fine, it's fine. Let it go, it's fine. I mean, we're not dropping it off me, but we're letting him let it go because you've still got one arm and one leg. Okay, right. Then he says to you, listen, I'm really, really struggling. This is really difficult. What I need to do is I need to let go of your leg, but don't worry, I've got your arm. Okay, so we're going from a double bond to a single bond where he is holding on to you just with one arm. He says he needs to hold on with his other arm in order to get you free. Okay, so do you agree from there to there, you're willing to give up that bond as well. You're saying, okay, fine, understand. If this is the only way to save me, yes, okay, let's, let's get rid of that bond over there and go to a single bond. It's going to be harder for you to give it up. Okay, harder, harder for you to break that bond than it was to just go, okay, fine, yes, you don't need to hold both my legs at the same time as my arm. Okay, right, it's going to be harder, okay? Now you're at single bond status, okay? He's just holding up you up with one hand or arm, okay? It's between him holding you with one arm and you plummeting to your death. And he then says, listen, the only way I'm going to save you is if you have to let go of my arm. I'm going to swing you over and I want you to let go and then jump onto the wall over here. In other words, you want me to break that bond. And I would freak. <laughs> I'd be going, no, it's okay. I'll just climb up your arm and over your head and climb onto the top of the mountain. Okay, right. So do you understand that that's kind of how the reactivity works? This is overall is the strongest bond. This year is slightly is strong, but it's slightly weaker than that. And this is overall the weakest bond. But, but if it comes to individual energies, okay, and breaking the bonds, the easiest bond to break is one of these three bonds. Then to break this, and then this dude here, he requires the most amount of energy to break. So this is very reactive. 
This is super quite reactive. And this is the least reactive because it takes the most amount of energy to break that last bond. Okay, so silly analogy, but I hope you now understand about reactivities of alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes, and the fact that alkenes are more reactive than the alkanes because they have got double bonds, they've got double bonds, and therefore they're unsaturated. Okay, there's a variety of uses. Ethene is used in plants to stimulate the ripening of fruits and the opening of flowers. So um, they actually do this. They actually take green bananas and plants and they actually spray them with ethene. Okay, and when they spray them with ethene, it actually simulates the fruits to ripen. And that's kind of how you end up with a whole bunch of bananas being ripe at the same time in your store. Because that's not really how it generally works. I mean, usually plants ripen, the plant's fruit ripens in stages. Okay, propene is a very important compound in petrochemical industry. It is used to make polypropylene. And what is polypropylene? Well, it is used to make these type of things, okay? It's a plastic of sorts. And when we do plastics and polymers, we will talk more about polypropylene. Okay, also used as a fuel gas. Okay, also used as a fuel gas, all your alkenes. So again, we've got this formula that we need to learn where you've got your, we have to learn how to balance, where we've got your, in this case, your alkene plus oxygen is always going to burn to form carbon dioxide and water. Now, yesterday I said to you that if you've got an alkane and it burns in insufficient oxygen, it knows that there's not enough oxygen, then it could form carbon monoxide and water. Alkenes don't do that. They always form carbon dioxide and water. And you just need to practice bond, I mean, practice balancing these equations. Right, let's talk alkynes. Alkynes are often kind of ignored in the curriculum because they've got exactly the same properties as alkenes, except that this time they've got a triple bond. So therefore they're more reactive than alkanes and alkenes. They are more reactive than alkanes and alkenes. Their general formula is CnH2n minus two. I don't know if I mentioned this in the previous lesson, so let's just make sure you know the general formula here is H2N, okay? Oh, there it is there, CnH2N. So the general formula here for alkynes is CnH2N minus 2, and again, when they combust, they will form carbon dioxide and water. So that's basically alkynes. Right, now, let's talk about isomers. Organic molecules have, that have the same molecular formula but different structural formula are called isomers. Now we've actually kind of come across isomers already. In the first lesson, we showed you some structural formulas and some then condensed structural formulas, etc., etc., and we drew something that looked like this: it was C dash C dash C, and then it was dash C. And then the rest of these were hydrogens. And the other one on this side was this. And you remember that I pointed out to you that they had the same number of carbons and the same number of hydrogens. They had four carbons and 10 hydrogens. And these were actually isomers of each other because an isomer is, it has the same molecular formula but different structural formula. In other words, they have the same number of carbons and hydrogens and whatever elements make them up, make up, make them up but they are arranged differently. And they're different types of isomers and when we come across them, I'll mention it. But at the moment, all you need to think about is the fact that there are three different types of isomers just for C5H12. So if you look at the first one here, you can see that there's pentane. Okay, and we have spoken very briefly about the naming and I'll talk to you about branching naming at the moment, but pent means five and ane is an alkane. So this is a really basic one. All I want you to look, I don't want you to worry about the naming at the moment, okay? All I want you to look at at the moment is the fact that there are five carbons there are five carbons and there are 12 hydrogens in every single one of these molecules, even though they're arranged differently. So let's just check that. So we've got one, 
two, three, four, five carbons, and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve hydrogens. And that's the easy one. Okay, let's just check this one. We've got one, two, three, four, five, and then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then similarly, yeah, I'm not going to count it. I'm sure you guys will agree that it'll have five carbons and 10, 12 hydrogens. But notice here that the main chain is five carbons long. Yeah, the main chain is four carbons long. And yeah, the main chain, whether you go, par I mean, horizontally or vertically, is three carbons long. So you've got three isomers which all have got five carbons and 12 hydrogens, but they're rearranged totally differently. And basically it means that they're gonna have different properties. They have different properties. And the larger the molecule, obviously the, num the greater the number of isomers. So if I have something that's C10H22, that's gonna have way more isomers than C5H12. Okay, it only makes sense because it means that there's so many more things that I could do with that. Okay, now let's talk about straight and branched hydrocarbons. Okay, all the hydrocarbons we've discussed so far are straight chain hydrocarbons. Okay, I'm not talking about the isomers. Okay, I'm talking about the alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. Everything I've spoken, spoken to for, so far has been straight chain hydrocarbons. But your carbon chains can be branched, as you can see here. Yeah. If you look here carefully, well, let me just quickly erase something. Okay, and yeah. If I say that this here is my main chain, do you see there's another carbon over here that comes off it? Or if I say this is my main chain, do you see that that comes a carbon and a carbon? And those are called branches because they carbons are your central core of your, your organic molecules. So basically what we're saying is off that main chain, there is a branch that has a carbon as a center. And similarly, so Carbon chains can be branched, and that means that one of the hydrogen atoms can be replaced by an alkyl group. But let's just talk about what an alkyl group is. An alkyl group is a group that is made up of carbons and hydrogens. Okay, basically you can think of it this way. If you think of methane as being one carbon with four hydrogens on it, a methyl group is going to be a carbon with three hydrogens on it. In other words, an alkyl group is a normal alkane group. It's a normal alkane that has lost one of its hydrogens to have a free arm. Okay, so if, for example, let me just show you another example. If, for example, we've got ethane, Ethane is going to be carbon, carbon, hydrogen, 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 and hydrogen, right? An ethyl group is going to be carbon, carbon, hydrogen, 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 and a free arm to bond. Okay, so let's have a look at this. This is a branched an example of a branched carbon chain. So yeah, you've got the main chain here, which has got four carbons. And okay, so it's got four carbons. And do you agree that yeah is a branch? Like that carbon with three hydrogens. Similarly, if we have a look at this, remember I said to you that carbon carbon chains aren't straight. I know that we draw it straight like this, but they're actually at angles. So this here is our main chain and there is our branch. And remember this is 3D, which is why it can look like it's sticking up into the air, whereas this is just drawn flat. Now, I want to point something out to you. You can also think of this as your main chain. Okay, one, two, three, four, it doesn't matter. And therefore this could be your main chain and that could be considered to be your branch. It really doesn't matter as long as your main chain has got the most number of carbons in it and it has all the functional groups in it. 
the kid has all the functional groups. We're going to talk about naming in a minute or two, but I just thought you need to understand that that is very, very, very important. Okay, so now if we're naming the alkyl groups, I've already kind of mentioned it to you. Okay, a methyl group. A methyl group is CH3. Now remember what I said to you guys, that you guys don't use the semi-condensed structure. I mean, yeah, we use either the structural formula, condensed structural formula, or the molecular formula. So it's either going to be C, H, H, H for you, which will be the structural formula, or it will be the condensed structural formula, which will be CH3, CH3, etc., etc. Or you would draw the molecular formula, which will be C2H6 in this case. Okay, so if I was drawing for that. Okay, this year, however, we're showing you the condensed structural form, a semi-condensed structural form, just to give you an idea. So what we're saying is that if you have a main chain, which is like this, then this year could be considered to be a methyl group. Okay, just a second, I just want to do something here. Okay, so CH3 with a free arm is considered to be a methyl group. So this here would be a methyl group and this would be a methyl group. Okay, ethyl group is made up of two carbons. Eth is two carbons and an IL means that it's joining on. So in other words, it's got a free arm, it's lost a hydrogen. So if you look over here, what they've done is they've chosen this blue block here as their main block. They've counted one, two, three, four, five. So their main chain's got five carbons going straight across, and therefore this is the ethyl group. Now I want to point something out to you, and this is important, and you need to understand it, is that if you look over here, this is just an alkane, right? Just an alkane. When I say just an alkane, there's nothing wrong with alkanes. It's just the point is that there are no other functional groups other than single bonds between the carbon atoms, which means we don't have to worry about that. So do you agree I could also count this way? I could draw the, I could say one, two, three, four, five, or I could go one, two, three, four, five. So either way, I could have a main chain of five carbons. I could count this down and then this would be a methyl group on the right hand side or or I could count this as being the main chain and this is the methyl, ethyl group. Okay, so you need to understand that it doesn't always have to go horizontally. We tend to choose if we've got the same type of thing. If there are five carbons going curved around on the right or on the left or straight across, we obviously choose the straight across just because it's easier to read. Um, and we're lazy. So therefore the blue is considered to be the main chain in this example, which is the horizontal, and then the red is going down. Propyl, okay, this here is not a nice alkane. Um, it is actually an ester, but the most important thing that the propyl group prop means three, and an il is something that used to be an n that now is got lost a hydrogen or something. And therefore we can say that this here is a propyl group. It is made up of three carbons and it's got its hydrogens and it has an arm and that is a propyl group. Right, butyl. Okay, this is an interesting drawing of a butyl. You don't even have to worry about what this purple structure is, but do you see there's one two, three, four carbons joined onto this purple structure, and therefore that can be considered an alkyl group. Okay, so let's talk about the naming rules of organic compounds. Now we've kind of mentioned it already, some of them, but you need to know that they tend to say to you, please name this organic compound using the IUPAC rules, or they'll say, what is the IUPAC name for this organic compound? Now, first of all, just let you know, the IUPAC stands for International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. And they're kind of the lawmakers. They're the ones that say, okay, fine, this is how we're going to, new, how we're going to name these. This is what, what, we, what standard we're going to use across the countries, across the world to name organic compounds, okay? So we're actually going to use them and there are a couple of steps and 
as we go into more and more complicated organic compounds, we might add one or two steps just to help us through those. But generally the steps are the same. Okay, so first things first is we identify the functional group of the molecule. Okay, the functional group, oh dear. Functional group of the molecule. And this determines the ending of the name. And remember the definition of a functional group said, it could be a bond, an atom, or a group group of atoms. Okay, it could be a bond, an atom, or a group of atoms that would actually be causing this to have the be the functional group. Okay, so in other words, it could be a single bond, double bond, triple bond, in which case that would be alkane, alkene, alkyne, or other atoms in that. And we will go through the different functional groups, so don't worry about that too much. Next, you need to find the longest continuous carbon chain which has the functional, oh, I don't know why this happened, has the functional group in it, okay? So you need to find the longest carbon chain which has the functional group in it and allocate its prefix according to the number of carbons in the chain. And remember we mentioned this yesterday, we said that the prefixes were meth, eth, prop, but, pent, hex, hept, and oct, which were one through to eight, and I said you have to learn them. Right, now, Next, you look for the number of carbon atoms. So the number of them, so the functional group or branches on the carbon are the lowest possible number. And the functional groups always get preference over branches. Functional groups always get preference over branches. You name the branch group according to the number of carbon atoms it has. And then if there's more than one branch group, then you use Greek prefixes, diatri, tetra, etc. Okay, this seems a bit confusing. So the best way to do it is actually to go through examples. Okay, so most of the examples that I could find from textbooks and exam papers, ridiculously, were actually using the semi-condensed structural formula. And that's fine. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to draw these out into structural formula and then we're going to name them, okay? So this becomes a C with three hydrogens on it. Okay, there is a carbon with a single hydrogen. Here is another carbon with three hydrogens on it. Then this carbon, the middle carbon, has another carbon on it and two hydrogens on it. And then the last carbon with three hydrogens. Now, please remember that these are three dimensional objects. So just because we're drawing it like this doesn't mean that it actually is flat like this at all. In fact, it's never like this. Okay, so now what is the first thing we do? First thing we need to do is number one, we identify the functional group. Okay, and do you agree that this is purely single bonds? So therefore, this is an alkane. Okay, that's what we know. It's an alkane. So we already know that the name is going to end in an. How cool is that? In fact, most of your naming for organic compounds tends to be from the back. Okay, you'll see now. Right, next we need to do, we need to find the longest chain Longest chain with the functional group. So since it's all single bonds, it's not a problem. So we can go one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, okay, so it's four. Okay, do you agree? So it really doesn't matter if we go like this or if we go like that. So I'm going to go like this and I'm going to actually, you guys could highlight it if you wanted to. Actually, maybe I should do that just to show you. So let's just erase. I oh, can't believe I did that. Okay, <laughs> let me just redraw this. <laughs> okay. Dear, I'm having a bit of a blonde day. Okay, so there we go. It's actually pretty, more prettily drawn at the moment anyway. So do we agree that this was an alkane because it's only single bonds? And now I want to use the highlighter and we decided that that there, well, that's a crappy highlighter. I can't even turn that around. There we go. That there is my main chain and it's got four carbons, right? So we now know that it's got four carbons. And if that's the case, what is the prefix of something with four carbons? It is going to be meth, eth, prop, but. So we know that this is going to be a but and it's going to be a butane, okay? 
Awesome. Now we see that we've got a something here we haven't included. This little group here. Now this little group is a methyl group. How do we know that? Well, it's obviously an alkyl group because it's joined on and it's got one carbon. So we know that it's a methyl group, right? So we can write methyl here. And now the only last thing we need to do is tell the people where we're going to find the methyl group. The whole point about naming these, if you want to think of it this way, is that if you name it correctly, then the person would be able to draw it. Okay, so if I drew, if I, if I name this correctly, the person will be able to go back and redraw it. They might not get the zigzag or whatever, but they'll be able to get the actual structure right. So now, now that we know it's a methyl group, awesome, we now need to say where it is. And we always number our long chain from the side closest to the functional group. And if there isn't another functional group, we then number it according to the side closest to the branch. So if I count it from the left hand side, do you agree it's one, two, three, four? Or if I counted from the right side, it'd be one, two, three, four. So do you agree that counting from the left hand side works? Because that means that this methyl group is on the second carbon. Whereas if I count from the right hand side, the methyl group would be on the third carbon. And the rule is that we always count from the side that is closest to the branch. So it's 2-methyl-butane. There you go. Okay, let's do another example. Okay, so now let's have a look. We've got Okay, so we need to, I'm not going to draw this out again. Okay, and this might actually be a non or a deck, but we'll have a look. Okay, so let's find our longest chain. We can go one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so that's an option. One, two, three, really? No. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's potential. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wait, wait. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so it's definitely a nine. So my main chain, my main chain is going to be along here, then up here, and then along there. Okay, that's my main chain. And I seriously, again, suggest that you guys highlight your stuff in class and in your exams to help you understand what's going on. Right, so that there is what is my main chain. Now I need to identify if there are any other functional groups. By the way, this is obviously an alkane because it's all single bonds, so I'm not worried about that. And there's no other functional groups, okay? But there is a branch over here and over here. Now remember that we number this long main chain from the side that's closest to the nearest functional group or if and or the nearest branch. So that means I obviously need to count from the left hand side because if I count from the left hand side this becomes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, and just because I can, and let's pretend just because this is it, we're gonna pretend this dude isn't here. So it's no longer a nine, it's now an eight. Okay, because you guys only have to go up to eight. Okay, so that's fine. And then this is obviously going to be pen a three. Okay, so we know that this is an octane, right? But there's two branches on it. There's one branch here in carbon two and one branch here in carbon four. Do you see that this branch here has got one carbon on it? And the one carbon group, okay, is meth. And because it's not methane, it's going to be methyl or methyl. Yeah, there are two carbons on this chain and therefore it's ethyl. Okay, and yeah comes the trick. The trick is that we always write them alphabetically. Write the branches 
alphabetically, alphabetically, not numerically, not with size, alphabetically. So you can agree that ethyl comes before methyl, S comes before meth, okay, E comes before M, okay, so it doesn't matter that this ethyl group is on carbon 4 and the methyl group is on carbon 2, it's actually, it's actually that this ethyl group is joined on, is alphabetically before methyl. So what do we do? We say 4 ethyl, 2 methyl octane. And please note you have to have your little dashes. So it's 4 ethyl, 2 methyl octane. Okay, let's move on to the next thing. And you will immediately notice that we've got a double bond there. So we immediately say, okay, fine. Well, we know this is an alkene, an alkene. Okay, now next we need to identify the main chain. But remember what's, the more, more, what's important is that the main chain has to have the functional group in it. So you can't go one, two, three because that doesn't have double bond in. You can't go one, two, three because that has a double bond, doesn't have a double bond in. You have to either go one, two, three, four, or you can go one, two, three, four. And it really doesn't matter which one you do. So quite personally, I am going to go straight across. And I'm going to go, okay, fine, that there is my main chain. Okay, so that there's my main chain. <clears throat> which means it's got how many carbons in it? It means it's got one, two, three, four carbons. Four carbons in it. So if it's got four carbons in the main chain, we know it's got a butte. Okay, and we know it's got a double bond, so therefore it is an ene. But now, what's important is that you could have a different isomer. You could have C double bonded C dash C dash C, or you could have what you have now, which is C dash C double bonded C dash C. So do you agree that there are two places we could have the double bond? And these are isomers of each other. Okay, it's exactly the same number of carbons, exactly the same number of bonds, but the bonds are in a different place, which means this is going to react differently. So we need to tell the person that is reading this where that double bond is. So we need to tell them which carbon it's on. And you always again choose from the smallest number, so it's going to be but two in. In which case, the person that's reading this is going to know that it's going from the second carbon to the third carbon for the simple reason that if it was going from the first to second, I would have just written butene or butene. Not that we write butene. Um, it's like saying one X. <laughs> okay, it says butene, but we haven't finished because we haven't mentioned the two branches. There's one there and there's one there. So now, do you agree that both of those branches have got exactly one carbon in them, All right? And what is the prefix for one, for one carbon? Okay, the prefix is going to be meth, meth. So that is methyl or methyl, okay? But how many are there? Well, there are two of them, so therefore we have to say they're dimethyl, Okay, you always write using the Greek prefix of di, tri, etc. to tell me how many methyl groups there are. There's two, so it's dimethyl. But now if I write dimethyl butyl, what would I draw that? If I drew that, what would I draw? I would know it would be one, two, double bond to three, four, and I'd have three arms here, I'd have one year, I'd have one year, and I'd have three here. And it tells me I've got a methyl group. Do you agree that those methyl groups, two methyl groups of it, can go anywhere here? It can either go on this arm and that arm or any one of these arms, it doesn't matter. So we need to tell them where we find the methyl groups. So the methyl groups are in carbon 2 and carbon 3. So we go 2, comma 3, dash, dimethyl, but 2 in. Okay, 2, comma 3, dash, dimethyl, but 
two in. There is another way you could write this. You could have written it as two three dimethyl two butene. Nothing wrong with that. That is saying that the in group that um, the double bond is on the second carbon. Nothing wrong with that. That's just more old fashioned. This is well, actually I don't know. It depends on your lecturer. Okay, it doesn't matter. Either is acceptable. Right, so now I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to work out what, actually no, it's fine. Let's rather do the next one in a couple of minutes. Okay, so let's look at this. Okay, again, do you see we've got a nice double bond here? Okay, nice double bond. So this one's pretty easy. We've got one, two, three, four, five, and six. So do you agree that it's a double bond? Okay, so it's an in. There are six of them, so it's a hex. And we are saying, where do we find the double bond? Well, we find the double bond on this third carbon, so it's hex three in, or how did I say you could write it? You could write it as three hex in, three hex in. Okay, now this is the one where I wanted to give you a couple of seconds to just try this for yourself. So try it for yourself, okay, and then I will be I'll be back in two seconds to give you the answer. Right, so have you worked it out? Let's see if you have. Okay, obviously this has got a double bond, so obviously it means it's an alkene. Now, here's the trick. We need to find the longest chain that includes the double bond in it. Okay, so let's count. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so the longest chain is obviously a pent. It's a pent, and it's obviously a pent in. But now, and okay, but now you've got to be careful. If we count this way, hang on, let me show you. Let's go highlight it. If we count this way, one, two, three, four, five, do you see that our branch has a branch? Okay, we can't do that. We don't have the facility of naming it. So therefore we can't go that way around. Okay, we have to use a side where there is not that happening. So uh, just erase that. So therefore we have to go straight across. We have to 
good. Well, in that case, it's this way. Okay, so therefore we can say, okay, fine, it's obviously going to be pentene. Okay, now we need to count from the side that's closest to either the functional group or the branch. But the branch, but the functional group gets preference. So if I count this way, one, two, three, four, five, do you agree that there'd be a branch on carbon two and a branch on carbon three, but then the double bonds on carbon three? But if I count this way, one, two, three, four, five, then there is a branch on carbon four and a branch on carbon three, but the double bond starts on carbon two, and that is the winner because you need for the end to be closest to the functional group. In this case, the functional group is a double bond. So therefore, we're going to say that this is pent two in, or if you want, two pentene. Okay, whichever is easiest for you, both are correct. Then we need to mention our alkyl groups okay and again this is an ethyl group and this is a methyl group and what did we say we said that it had to be alphabetical not numerical alphabetical so ethyl comes before methyl so and then we need to say where it is so it's going to be on the third carbon is the ethyl and then on the fourth carbon is the methyl and do you see why I said to you that you actually name these backwards? You first decide what is the functional group, then you count the name in my main chain, then you decide where the functional group is, and then you look at the branches. Okay, right, grade 12s. I think what we'll do is we'll leave it at this point and we'll carry on with organic chemistry um, tomorrow, obviously, and we'll be moving on to slightly more complicated halo alkanes and alcohols, etc, etc. Have a wonderful evening. Bye.